good afternoon, guys. So uh, my pleasure to join the very cozy atmosphere of these two days and uh, of the such uh, a great exposure to their professional team of uh, enthusiasts of API. Um, I would say I'm a bit of new to their uh, area of the voice APIs, though I'm very, very old guy in terms of their APIs in general, I would say in this way. So within, uh, yeah, first of all, again, Thanks to Alan and thanks to Yanni, whom I know for, uh, for many years from my old voice background. Um, nice to speak here because I want to have a couple of uh, takeaway actions from, from all of you to support my, my strategy in what we are doing in ADS a lot. And I mean, within uh, these uh, minutes, I'm, I'm going to walk you through what we are doing in terms of uh, programmable voice and what is ADS a lot and I mean, what is our ambitions and what is our current state of the art. So just before jumping in their details, few few things about I mean how do I come to the uh, to the TAT summit? I started many years ago as an AI engineer, and I had very very much passionate about the software industry in general. That's why I'm saying I'm an uh, IT guy stuck in telco, so I'm uh, enjoying doing there a lot of uh, API work by myself. Then I had a quite quite long time working and. Uh, for the big providers like Deutsche Telekom, France Telekom, uh, doing some OSS stuff. And then I moved to their big vendor guys like Avai, like Microsoft, where I learned very well what is on-prem voice and how on-prem voice can transform into the cloud. And then finally, I landed into their operator uh, with a very, very um, nice uh, challenge that uh, my current team sell me one and a half years ago when I was joining their uh, the, the operator. So basically they promised me that I will be able to um, launch the products that has been failed in terms of launch in many other regions because uh, Middle East and especially UAE has quite unique climate in terms of regulation and as well as ARPU. So um, we are very close to launch and I hope next year I will be able to share with you some of the results of that. And Right now, just the things about the strategy and the opportunity. So, giving you just the hint, because I'm heavily focused into their UAE, United Arab Emirates market. So, what is it, the market as itself, in terms of their business climate or business environment? Because, being honest, I travel the world heavily, but before, one and a half years ago, when I landed in Dubai, I know zero about UAE. So, it was not really my spot there. So, I mean, there environment is very exciting, a lot of um, industries, a lot of opportunities. Number one, big hub for the Middle East and Africa multinational companies in a number of sectors. Um, number two, very strong presence in terms of the e-government and smart cities, so um, UN nations or McKinsey ranking both country and particular cities very high in terms of the maturity of their e-government services, in terms of their access through their, all their omni-channel um, connectivities to their governmental services. And number three, what we actually very much passionate is Expo 2020 that is coming to the region. That will be the first expo uh, outside of their EMEA region, first first expo in their um, MENA and uh, South uh, and Africa region. And I think here in uh, Lisbon, that's very, very well known. What is what is Expo? How big is expectation? How big investment? Actually, I mean, Etisalat is uh, one of the key sponsors and key partners of this event. I've been last week on their Expo site. A lot of a uh, lot of things. Everything is moving. Everything is uh, taking the shape. And a lot of innovation ideas. How both participants, exhibitors, and the guests should benefit from their new wave of uh, communication capabilities. Yeah, besides their country as itself, what is what is Edi A couple of hints. So Edi Salat is incumbent telco in UAE, but actually this is a group that operates in 15 countries. Uh, other large operational area uh, countries is uh, Egypt, um, Pakistan, Saudi, and then Morocco Telecom, which is a group by itself. So altogether 15 countries, though UAE still accounts for 60% of the revenue of the group, so this is a target market, and this is our typically pilot market where we're doing their trials and implementation of the products. Though 
couple more things that we are very much, uh, I would say, poisoned of the innovation spirit because it goes through the company, through the country, through their uh, vision of their leaderships, and this is a bit of also uh, regional flavor, so you can see they're one of the most important uh, leaders in, in that country, prime minister and ruler of Dubai, um, famous for being establishing their Ministry of Happiness a while, uh, several years ago, and then Ministry of Artificial Intelligence one year ago. So this is actually uh, performing bodies with an agenda and with a committee, not just a formal organization. But as well, um, the innovation support is a uh, um, very important public agenda. And as well, ADSLR is doing a lot of to, to support the community. So, I mean, of course, we have our acceleration program uh, supporting uh, ideas through the seed stage to the go-to-market, to, to the actual rollout. And we're doing that through the two um, programs, two initiatives, not just seeding their existing ideas, but um, in addition to the seeding of existing ideas, uh, we also do the challenge model where we bring specific topics to the market and helping startups to innovate, helping startups to contribute out of the areas where they um, worked before to contribute to this idea. And well, we already succeeded in three waves of that. And for example, the first wave was devoted to e-health, where one of our partners is very close to start using our CPAS prototype to enable their communication between doctors and patients, and that already has a business business result as reducing num number of chronic patients, number of occupancy of the hospitals. So, I mean, we are very pragmatically looking to their use cases and to the revenues behind that. Um, besides their startup ecosystem, we also trying, not trying actually, we innovating in terms of the enterprise approach. So the famous uh, design thinking um, concept and then ye the workshop yesterday that happened, we also uh, using that to work closely with our customers. So within our company, we have an innovation lab. Actually, this is a premise plus trainers plus experts that help customers to bring their challenges, to bring their issues, and together with ATSLAT capabilities to brainstorm and design the right solution out of the design thinking methodology. So. This is, in, in simple English, what I'm trying to say. From one hand side, from one leg, of course, we are um, heavy um, and legacy telco. From the other hand side, we are very much looking to the digital space. We have a dedicated Edisla digital organization working with purely digital products. But as well, in terms of the spirit and nature, we are very um, interested in uh, innovating and, and, and being agile towards the market and solutions. So this is about the landscape. So more precisely about their programmable telecoms area and wh where I'm coming to. So one thing, when one and a half years ago I came to their region, I learned a lot of new things for me. One of them was very tough regulation. UAE is one of the rare countries where voice over IP is actually regulated service that also put a lot of uh, pressure on us as a telecom operator. So that's why when we start looking to our partners across the globe, whom we can do with their um, both unified comms and the CPAS, we go through a number of criteria. And then the most important for us was number one, ability to deploy the uh, solution in terms of the private cloud in the country, because that was a part of the regulation requirements or the personal data of the media stream data that should stay within the country. Uh, of course, another thing that we look heavily for the user experience and as well in terms of the customer approach, we are typically working in a white label mode because we are owning the relations with the customer and back to their explanation of ADC a lot, with a, in B2B space, we owning 95% of the market at least on some of the services out of our portfolio. So we've been interested to provide that out of ADC a lot brand umbrella. And then within the UCAS, we actually five minutes to lunch. So, I mean, this week I'm here. My team is uh, finalizing their ATP of, of the platform. We have a very good and health ambition to reach 35,000 seats over the first year of rollout. Um, it could be not a large figure from our 
market presence, and of course we have a significant install base that we want to conver convert, uh, we want to migrate, and that looks realistic. Technology-wise, we definitely will be challenged over the migration period. We go to the market with uh, two product sets, one for SMB out of the four standard packages addressing their different profiles of the users from their old desk phones through their uh, mobility and through their collaboration. That is bundled product together with broadband connectivity and with their devices like Wi-Fi wi -Fi access points, like uh, screens. And then there is a very customized proposition for the large enterprises. And for large enterprises, we actually consider the companies even about 100 seats uh, as enterprise segment, which could have specific requirements in terms of the integration, which would have uh, connectivity in terms of the MPLS network. So that is a different, different kind of products. So this is our current um, game plan for their uh, soon launch. Now about the SIPA strategy. So we define the strategy and now we are actively looking for the partners to join uh, this uh, exciting journey. So we believe that um, high-level SIPA strategy falls into two tracks. One track is um, API-based do-it-yourself approach where we consider as the main customers of, of this approach either very, very much entrepreneurial and a startup community or um, enterprise great IT departments over the large enterprises. And we already have a very healthy pipeline of both uh, startups and enterprises who is looking for, for their such capabilities across a number of industries. So we believe that um, the right commercial model for that is a transactional based model. And as well, um, we understand that we need to invest in the growing developers community. But in addition to their API do-it-yourself, we also believe that for us as a telco, having a significant footprint, um, the prepackaged solution that can be spread across the SMB segment, across a lot of the customers, could be a very exciting opportunity in terms of revenue. And this is what we're also looking for. So we planning our CPAS across two, two dimensions, and we also understand that there is a uh, wide breadth of different use cases that we can implement there. So basically, the questions that we are trying to answer by, by ourselves, where is, where is the primary revenue? Because we are also interested in a good start and successful start out of the large use cases. We're interested in what is the, the best model, transactional, or value-based pricing, how we can better accommodate it across different use cases. We are discussing and, and investigating um, how we can grow developer community. So this is all, all the pieces of, of our strategy. And yeah, basically as uh, my, my takeaway out of, uh, out of my story is that I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be part of uh, the community and I'm, I'm inviting you to join our CPAS um, CPAS investigation and CPAS uh, piloting. So we already starting the first pilots with our, our customers, with our external clouds. We also think that um, later on, when we will go through their testing uh, phase, we, as a next step, we will need to deploy the solution based in uh, UAE in our private cloud, because that is uh, right for now the only mean to be compliant to the local regulation. But this is their exciting opportunity for us, and I'm hope for uh, some of you. Thank you.